All right, peeps, welcome back to my channel. Bitcoin exists as BTC. There are other forms of BTC that exist that I'm gonna to explain to you now. These forms of Bitcoin aren't just bought to buy and hold and wait for the price to go up. They're bought to use in certain DeFi applications. The first bunch are wrapped BTC, REN BTC and TBTC. So these are all essentially Bitcoin that has been modified to be able to work on the Ethereum blockchain. So each crypto has its own blockchain, right? And each blockchain is its own system by which you can transfer that crypto around in that network. So when you send Bitcoin to someone, it's on the Bitcoin blockchain. When you use Ethereum, it's on the Ethereum blockchain. Cardano has its own blockchain. So Bitcoin in its pure form of BTC, you can't send on the Ethereum blockchain unless you modify it to become something called an ERC-20 token. Right. Any crypto that you see is an ERC-20 token means that it's only compatible on the Ethereum network. So in order to get Bitcoin on the Ethereum network, you need to convert it into an ERC-20 token. Right. And that's what wrapped REN and TBTC are. So why do you want to put Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain? The reason why is because Ethereum is where all of the decentralized finance money making opportunities are. Ethereum is the building ground for loads of apps that are being used. And right now, the ones that are booming are in decentralized finance. Nothing is getting built on Bitcoin. Right. The only thing you can do with Bitcoin is send it to someone else. With Ethereum, you can transact Ethereum the same way you can Bitcoin, but you can also spend Ethereum to use in its entire ecosystem of all of their decentralized apps. So the way it works is that people who own Bitcoin can convert it to wrapped BTC or REN BTC or TBTC, and then they can use it on the Ethereum network to make money you can lock it into DeFi lending platforms like Compound or Aave, and you can borrow stable coins against it. Basically, you're locking up your Bitcoin, pulling money out, and people use that money to buy more crypto. So the plan is that the crypto goes up in price, they'll sell it, make profit, pay back their loan, and get their Bitcoin back. Another way you can use it to make money is by pairing wrapped Bitcoin with another crypto and then becoming a liquidity provider on Uniswap. So Uniswap is a decentralized exchange. So you can go on there to buy and sell cryptos. Because it's decentralized, they're not like a centralized exchange like Binance or Coinbase, who will keep loads of crypto ready there for you to buy. So the crypto that you can get access to buy from on Uniswap is provided by individual people, right? And they're called the liquidity providers. And the liquidity providers make money by locking up their crypto and they'll make money by getting a percentage of the transaction fees. It's a good opportunity to make money, but there are some risks. So if you lock up your crypto to borrow stable coins and buy a crypto, that's dependent on the crypto going up in price, right? If it goes down in price, then you've got to pay back a loan when you're at a loss. And also, right, there are, there are risks to becoming a liquidity provider on Uniswap, something called impermanent loss. It's very important to understand that before you begin to put your money into it. So when you convert your Bitcoin to wrapped REN or TBTC, the way it works is that you lock up your Bitcoin on the Bitcoin network and the protocol issues an equivalent amount of the wrapped REN or TBTC on the Ethereum network. Right, the difference between those BTCs are wrapped BTC has a centralized custodian. So you'll give your BTC to a centralized holder, but REN BTC and TBTC use a decentralized protocol to keep custody of your Bitcoin. So there is another type of tokenized Bitcoin called SBTC, which stands for synthetic BTC. So this is Bitcoin that has been made from the synthetics protocol so Synthetics is a major player in the DeFi space. Synthetic assets are tokens that track the price of anything. So yeah, synthetic assets like SBTC track the price of Bitcoin one-to-one. -one. So Synthetic BTC differs from wrapped REN and TBTC because it doesn't have any Bitcoin back in it at all. Instead of locking up your Bitcoin and pulling out wrapped Bitcoin, Synthetic BTC is backed by the Synthetics token SNX. 
As a side note, I've invested in SNX because the entire derivatives market is valued at over one quadrillion. So if the synthetics DeFi protocol can capture just a small fraction of that, it's gonna be massive. So these versions of Bitcoin that I've spoken about, they normally trade at a price slightly higher than the actual Bitcoin price because the demand for them is higher. So there are new forms of tokenized Bitcoin coming out all the time. So the last form of Bitcoin that I wanna talk about is something called GBTC, Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is completely different to the other types of tokenized Bitcoin that I've spoken about. So Grayscale are a digital asset management firm that own something called the Bitcoin Trust. They own a crazy amount of Bitcoin. It's estimated that they own around 5% of the entire Bitcoin supply. Yeah, so as of April 2021, they owned over 650,000 Bitcoin. The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is a way to buy Bitcoin using the stocks and shares route. So what they've done with this Bitcoin is that they've locked it up into this fund and they've created loads of shares from it. And you can buy the shares of GBTC rather than the actual Bitcoin itself. So the thing is with this trust, it's only open to accredited investors that have an income over $200,000 or a net worth over a million. And the minimum investment is 50K. Why do people want to do this? So it's mainly these big institutional players that are buying GBTC. The reason why is because some companies aren't allowed to buy Bitcoin or crypto yet, but they are allowed to buy stocks and shares. So the biggest reason why people are buying it right now is because GBTC is actually cheaper than actual BTC. Because the demand to buy it dropped when the crash happened, the price of GBTC dropped below the actual price of Bitcoin. So also by buying Bitcoin in this stocks and shares route, it's a way that you can buy Bitcoin to use in things like retirement accounts, which has tax advantages. But the downside is when the demand is high, the price will be at a premium. So it will be more expensive than normal Bitcoin. And you, you also have to pay a grayscale fee of 2% a year. I don't do any of these, by the way. I can't invest in GBTC because I ain't a baller, but I am thinking that when we go into a bear market, I may use some of these DeFi lending platforms like Compound or Aave to earn some yield by locking up some wrapped Bitcoin or REM BTC. I'm not using it yet because I'm planning on selling crypto before the bear market hits. But after that, I'm going to be buying back into crypto slowly. And that crypto, probably in 2022 or 23, I'm going to be locking it up on DeFi lending platforms in order to earn yield. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you later.